Okay, so I am in Shroud of the Avatar, and uh, this is a first look at R16. I'm currently in a village of Primedo, Primedo, which is uh, outside of Ardris. Uh, my plan is to uh, basically go back to Ardris, back across, um, wander, wander through. Um, um, the Hidden Vale and uh, get back to uh, uh, the, the usual starting spot and, and talk about talk about um, all the new features on the way. Um, this guy here isn't a tour guide; he's a banker. Although he is wearing the uh, the prize for the Grand Tour, which is this uh, bunny mask thing. It being Easter and all. I'm wearing my dress and my hat. We can see my oh, we can see that my hat has hair underneath it, which has been something of an issue for uh, many releases. And I'm not just wearing a dress to show off. I'm wearing a dress because the first new feature I'm going to mention is that they've switched to a uh, new cloth model. Uh, my first impressions of this cloth model are that it's, although clearly the cloth is moving around, you know, probably much more than in the previous release, it doesn't look very, very realistic. I don't know whether this is just a Linux issue or that's a, uh, a, general, a general thing. It does look a bit better from a distance, I suppose. But close up, I'm not that impressed. And the reason I've started here is because um, oh, we're going into into an encounter. The reason I started here is because this uh, whole area has been balanced, apparently, to to better yeah, to better cater to newbies since most of the most of the areas most of the areas that newbies come into are actually in this Don't do that in this area around Ardua so that the perennial coast unless I'm you know just totally confused. I might be, you never know. I can sort of get away with wearing a dress because I'm not a total noob. I'm at level 28, which is uh, plenty good enough to take on these wolves. Let's just try harvesting. I've got a 25% chance of harvesting the grey wolf. Failed. Well, that's an improvement. Improvement on the uh, last one, which would tell you every time you attempted to harvest. You now realise. There we go. Got some crafting experience. I think I can just keep going until you do. Yes, you can. So the crafting experience was introduced in the last release. Take all. There we go. Now we can see my crafting experience. There. That's my crafting experience. Prod, prod level 1 experience. 3 for 3 of 1000. Now, crafting was something that was uh, due to be brought in in this release like the more complete model of crafting that they anticipate anticipate being in the final game but it's been pushed back because there were there were there was a big thing switched to Unity 5 for the last release and the, the developers felt like they they lost sight of uh, you know the actual gameplay if that makes sense so although there was a lot of technical changes, they uh, they felt like the gameplay suffered, and they they didn't want that to happen. So this release, uh, they've really they've pared down on the features. They've done a lot of uh, work under the covers, which I'll talk about in a minute. That's now we're entering Ardris. Now, if you've watched any of my previous videos you'll know that getting through Ardoris is a complete slog. 
and and always has been. Um, we know the game isn't isn't optimised yet, but in this release they have done some uh, pretty pretty uh, important bits of um, of uh, optimization. The first of which is that previously the game basically kept in memory a model of everything. So when you were in a player town with player housing and player decorations it would keep track of all the decorations that were inside player houses even when you were just running past them. So one of the big optimizations they've done for this release is that now the the objects in a player house are basically ignored until such time as you enter the lot where the house is. So this should make all the towns a lot more performant, he says. That's we lag pretty badly. Uh, they've also done some work on the network code which should uh, reduce the, the data requirements. Um, now you see I have been lagging a bit, but generally this is moving more smoothly than it did in the previous release I think. Now one of the things, another new thing in this release is uh, waypoints basically. Um, I don't know what, what the what the actual um, what's the discovery system, that's what they're calling it. So after you discover something, like the oracle there, because I ran back through to get to the start earlier, that now appears on your compass and the boat back to Kingsport you can see is just over there towards the southwest. So probably as I run through here and uh, and start arriving at some places I've not been before. We will see some of those actually in action. Right, there's still a bit of lag. The cloth definitely is looking more funky now. Yeah, that's that. Oh, that is a tour guide. So there's a tour guide in Ardoris this time. We recorded the location. There we go. You see, location of main square recorded. If you saw that pop up in the chat below. Now we are lagging a bit now. So, I don't know. It's a bit better than it was before. It's not much better. It'll be interesting uh, later to get up to Owl's Head to see what see what it's like up there. Because that's one of the places where it ought to be massively improved. Uh, although in this release, there's actually a lot less reason to go to Owl's Head. Because of all the work they've been doing on the, on the Novia overworld map, a lot of the locations that previously you could only reach through the portal at Owl's Head you can now uh, walk to basically oops sorry guard because they're integrated into the maps now have we gone the right way what's this That's the one. I think so, yes. Right to Kingsport. So I think the way it works there, does this now looks larger and more solid. So I suspect the way this works is things look a bit more faint when they're f away. And we go passage to Kingsport. Anyway, it's a nice, it's a nice feature. It definitely, it's uh, going to improve the game a bit. You have to spend lost, less time wandering around lost once you've uh, located key things. Um, King Sports loading up. So, uh, this is a bit slow. No, no, we're still on the wrong now. Look. So, as we get into Kingsport, um, 
Now, one of the improvements in this release is they've they've improved the uh, the responsiveness of the controls. Um, previously, there was some artificial delay, which meant it didn't always, you know, when you clicked to do an attack, it didn't always immediately animate that attack. And uh, this also extends to objects you interact with. They they are now uh, now uh, you should be able to see as people are crafting. You should see the object they're crafting. Um, I doubt we'll get a chance to see that in this video. I'm just mentioning it now. Now we're looking here at another of the new features. This sign uh, indicates it's a reagent shop. We wander along here. Yeah. Let's do a light. This sign indicates it's the bank. And further along there I think is a pub. I don't know if the pub's got a sign. Oh yes, look. The Hearth of Britannia. It's like actual proper signs around the shops. Uh, here's a vendor. I don't think I can afford any of the uh, player player created stuff. Grim Anthology. Dragonbone Throne. Chest Armor of Dodge. Yeah, I've not got 4,000 gold. Hellbird of Damage. See, that might be quite nice. Oh, and while we're here, yes, let's talk about elemental elemental damage. So elemental damage has been implemented in this release. And that uh, uh, you know fire elemental elementals will do fire damage and will be resistant to fire damage. Uh, that's all part of a slightly wider wider improvement to the whole NPC thing, which hopefully I will be demonstrating as I trudge across um, <coughs> the Hidden Veil. Right, I'm going to take my dress off. Well, I'm not just going to take it off. What I'm going to do is put my armour back on. Because much as I don't mind leaping around in oh, panties. Uh, leggings, there we go. Leggings, I've got my sword. Where's my helmet? There we go. I don't want to be taken by surprise at any point. I think I'm fully kitted out now. So, off, off into Hidden Vale. Right, it's recorded the location of the Hidden Vale, which is nice. Entering Hidden Vale from Kingsport. So this shouldn't take too long, I don't think. There we go. Now, what I wanted to do was head to a swamp. So let's just head across to that, that path there. And while I'm jogging along this path, I shall point out two things. One is that I'm actually running on a path now because they've done a lot of work to uh, make make uh, the paths actually match up with the the uh, parts of the map that look like roads so there should be less sudden walking as you're navigating the world maps which certainly will reduce a bit of the uh, travel frustration the reason I've come to the moors is I think they're a swamp. And one of the new things... It's a, no, no, they're not. Well, they don't look very swampy. Alright. Oh, wolf spider. Ooh. Oh, 
we'll defeat all these creatures. Now it does look like, at this point, my my clicking on the on the uh, symbols produces an immediate result in the actual battle, which is uh, what I was talking about before. Poison that bear. Let's move towards him. Ah, I'm trapped. There we go. So, one of the things you uh, might have just noticed that I didn't, that spider was able to uh, trap me. And the reason it is able to trap me is because the enemies, the NPCs now, have abilities of their own. So the skills you have as a player, the NPCs now also have a 1% chance of skinning a grizzly bear. Yeah, well, okay. I don't think I'm going to hang around to do that. So they also have abilities like you do, uh, you know, in keeping with their character. And, uh, oh no, no, 300 experience. And so you can be afflicted by their skills. So, although that was a bit of a washout as far as, oh, another spider, run away. Washout as far as the finding the swamp was concerned. That did allow me to uh, demonstrate that new feature. I presume if I run into any elves or anything, or skeletons, they will have sword fighting skills like I have sword fighting skills. We shall see. So anyway, let's head back. Oh, Elf's Nest, I think that's new. Head back towards Kingsport and, and head across. So yes, I don't think I got to it before, but the second thing I was going to point out, apart from the roads, was uh, there are new trees in this release. Uh, I think they're a, a Unity 5 feature, fast trees or something. I didn't, I didn't make a note of the exact. Exact. Um, exact name of it but certainly this land is now far more covered in trees than it was before so I think this is a uh, the trees are algorithmically generated which is why they're called fast trees so you can have a variety of trees that, uh, that are all quite different Uh, we're in Bremer, which is uh, the traditional starting point in the past. And I think I've talked about nearly everything I was going to talk about in this video, which isn't bad. I think we're in about uh, 20 minutes. Should be we get some close-up views of some of these uh, new trees here in Braemar. I don't know if this is any of them. Keep your eyes open. Shout out if you spot one. No, I'm not sure. I know there are supposed to be some around here. I don't know if any of these trees are. So there are a few other things uh, that are probably worth mentioning that I've not been able to demonstrate in this video. One is uh, random encounters are no longer a uh, single player uh, experience. If you, if you uh, 
see someone else enter a random encounter, you can go in. You can go in and join them. Tour guide, right? Nice man in the hat. William the Merchant. So yes, yeah, so you can go in and join them. Now the reason I was looking for a swamp was because one of the new creatures in this release is a crocodile. Uh, I'll have to do a bit more research. I'm sure there was a swamp in that area before. That was just me. Um, Let's see if I can talk to the merchant. Apparently not. Right, the location of William the Merchant is recorded. It then won't let me talk to him. So that seems to be a bug. Let's go and speak to the skills trainer then. Now that location of... right. So there does seem to be a bug here that once you've recorded the location for the first time you then can't interact. Which is a bit of a pain. Uh, so what the other thing I was going to mention is that uh, repair kits have been uh, made so that they, the amount of uh, repair they do scales with the strength of the weapon. So it's no longer the case that if you have good equipment, uh, the repair kits make almost no difference. I don't know if I've actually got any repair kits in my inventory at the minute. Have I? No, because I basically gave up buying repair kits and instead bought a whole new set of armour. That was my basic approach because the repair kits just seemed, well, it seemed to me it was more, exper more expensive to buy repair kits and repair the stuff than it was to just buy a whole load of new armour for, well, for less than a thousand gold. 10 repair kits didn't really get you very far. Uh, and so the final thing, which unfortunately we didn't get to see because we didn't come across any, undead undead creatures will now resurrect themselves unless you kill them with magic. Uh, so that will be quite interesting to see. I'm fairly confident. Uh, so I do the Grand Tour. This is my want. Uh, see, I can't interact with him either. So I do the Grand Tour. Oh, oh, can I do it? There we go. We're back in with the merchant. Alright. Let's have a repair kit. Ooh, nightshade. Anyway, let me let me do that shop now. Well we can interact a bit. It seems there are some bugs. We'll not worry about that now then. Yes, so uh, that's uh, uh, what's that there? William the Merchant on the on the compass. Yes. So that's uh, R16. So there's a lot of work been going on. Some of it's paid off. Some of it hasn't yet. I've no doubt going on uh, past releases that they'll, they'll address a lot of these issues in the next few days, and uh, I'll be doing my usual. Uh, Grand Tour videos over the weekend.